Hi, friends. I'm just going to open up my chat here so I can see um, if there's anybody here. Excellent. Good. So I'm just going to wait just a, a minute or two. Um, and while we're waiting, I will uh, quickly introduce myself. So um, I, and I, I'm introducing myself because I realized that I didn't uh, introduce myself last time. I just kind of got into things. My name is Jennifer Stables, and um, I'm an artist, um, illustrator, author, and teacher. I used to teach kindergarten, grade one, two. Um, now I teach in schools as an artist in residence, so I get to travel to all different places all over the province, and um, mostly in Calgary, and I get to work with entire schools and develop um, projects and uh, based around curriculum for them and I get to see lots of people and share my passion for art. So I am absolutely thrilled to be here with you guys today. It is truly, truly an honor and a pleasure um, and a privilege to be able to share my passion with you and thank you. So I know a lot of people, um, or not a lot, but <laughs> a few people did email me to say that they will be um, watching the recording of this because they couldn't make it this morning. Um, so like I mentioned in my last session, one of the limitations that we do have when it comes to these virtual meetings is I can't be there to, to help you and to say, you know, try this, try that. So I will be looking at um, the discussions here and I'm just going to double check that I've got that up. Um, so I will be looking at the chat that comes up. Um, if for any reason I do happen to miss a question, please email me and let me know what your questions are. If any point you get really frustrated or you're, if you're working with your kids, if they get really, really frustrated, I suggest that you just pause and step away and you can always look at the video. The video will be posted on YouTube afterwards and then you can always, always contact me directly and I will help you in any way that I absolutely can. I want to kind of bridge those, uh, that gap between us, um, even though I can't be there with you in person. So today we are painting the relief sculptures that we made last time. So you had a little bit of homework in between our last session and this session. And your homework was um, just if you wanted to, and again, for our younger kids, they didn't necessarily have to do this last step. But what we did in that um, session or that time in between is we just added a little bit more texture so you can see I've added another layer onto my tree here and I also bulked up um, so to speak I bulked up the the bottom here. Um, the other thing that you could do to make the paint go on a little bit smoother is you can sand this down. Okay so if things look a little bit rough feel free to grab some fine sandpaper and sand it down. When I'm teaching, so if there's teachers out there that are listening, um, and I do this with students, I don't necessarily do that sanding uh, step because when I'm in a classroom, it does, I, my time is limited, so we don't necessarily use it for that. But it does make a difference, so if you did want to sand it down, you can do that. Once again, I'm going to be demonstrating both of these. Um, there's not going to be a huge difference between the more advanced one, which is the, um, the one that we see here that's more for adults or older kids, and the simpler one, which is right here. Not a whole lot of difference, um, but I found last time that it really helped my pace to slow me down a little bit so that you guys could um, at home could kind of catch up and I, I knew I wasn't going too fast. So I'll continue that. So our materials for today. We are using acrylic paints. I'm going to tip my camera down just for a second so you can see what I've got here. All right, so I have my acrylic paints over here. Um, acrylic paint does not come off of clothes. So I do want you to make sure that whatever surface you're working on, um, either you don't mind it getting dirty, like my surface here, which is my working surface, or you have something covering the surface, like newspaper or a tablecloth. Um, I have here, this is actually just a, a cake round. It's a piece of cardboard. I'm using this as my mixing palette, but really mixing palettes don't have to be fancy. If you have a scrap piece of cardboard, 
cardboard lying around, that works. If you have like an old Tupperware lid, that's a great mixing palette. They don't have to be fancy for mixing palettes, but this is what I'm going to use to mix my paint on. Um, I included in your kit, if you bought a kit for me, I also included um, some popsicle sticks. I know they look all fancy and colored, um, but these are really just to scoop the paint onto your onto your palette. You don't have to use popsicle sticks to scoop the paint onto your palette. Um, sometimes I just use my paintbrush. It just kind of eliminates this, that one step. Uh, I do have some water that I can rinse out my paintbrush in. And I have a scrap piece of paper. Mine happens to be a colored scrap piece of paper just so you can see what I'm doing on there. It's gonna have some contrast to it. Um, but yours could be any scrap piece of paper, even like, even a piece of cardboard, anything will do. That's just for practicing some of our brush strokes that we're going to be doing. I have two different kinds of paint brushes here. So one is more of a, a larger flat brush. So um, if you got a kit from me, again, I tried to put a flat brush in there and I tried to put either a round or a really small um, flat brush. And this is for getting into those details. For our younger kids that might be joining us, for some of the details like putting the eyeballs in, you might even want to use a Sharpie. That's perfectly acceptable and that can give us a little bit more control over it. And finally, I did include a wire and this is for hanging at the end. Um, I put, if you bought the kit for me, I put two little holes here so we can just use the wire to string it on top. Okay, all right, I'm gonna tip my camera back up and then we're gonna, we're gonna get started. All right, so, um, so you'll notice I really didn't have a lot of colors um, that I have here. I have my primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And then I also added some uh, brown, some black, and some white. Now, my palette as an artist, the stuff that I use as an artist, I use just mostly just the primaries. Um, I do use, say, like I'll have a light shade of yellow, for example, and a darker shade. I'll usually have like a cyan blue and a blue like this, uh, which is like either an ultramarine or a cobalt. And then I'll have a crimson red and I'll have a bright red. So I try to have two shades of the primaries plus black and white. Um, I hardly ever use black um, unless I'm doing my line work, but that's usually with India ink. Um, and sometimes I have brown, but mixing your own colors gives you such a better understanding of how colors work. So if you haven't tried mixing your own colors, I highly suggest that whenever you try to paint, mix them. Um, challenge yourself by grabbing an object and see if you can make that color. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful exercise. And when I have time to do that when I'm teaching, when I'm gifted with that time to explore color mixing, it is the most valuable thing you can do. So we're gonna color mix today. So we're gonna start with the green for our tree. So when we make green, we are making, or we are using two primary colors. We're going to use yellow and we're gonna use blue. So I'm gonna take a scoop of my yellow with my popsicle stick. And you can see it's a pretty generous scoop. Now I'm going to put that scoop onto my mixing plate and I'm going to try to keep it at the edge. So here I am just kind of putting it on there at the edge. Then I'm going to take some blue and my blue, I'm going to scoop it out again. And again, I'm going to put it at my edge. So when I have a, a scrap piece of paper or you know, for my palette, whatever I'm using for my palette. I want to have my pure colors around the outside, and then I do my mixing kind of towards the middle. So these are the first two colors that we're going to use. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush. Now of these two colors, my most powerful color is the blue. So what I wanna do is I wanna take the yellow first, I'm bringing a little bit into the middle, maybe about half of what you've got there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of blue. Now, I, it, the blue that I'm taking is so small compared to what I've just put for the yellow. And that's because that blue is gonna be more powerful. So I'm mixing those together. And that just that little bit of blue really turned that into a nice green. 
Now, there's ways that you can change the screen if you don't like the screen. And one way is to add a little bit of what we call its complementary color. So on the color wheel, the opposite of green, the green is made out of these two primaries. So the opposite is the third primary, which is red. Um, I'll just demonstrate that a little bit, but it's really not necessary. If you like this green, great. If you want it a little bit darker, add a little bit more blue. If you want it duller, so not as bright, you'd add a little bit of red. And when I say little, that's what I mean. Yeah, little. Um, and I put that in there and it just changes it just a little bit. And I know it might be a little bit hard to see on the screen here, but it's almost changed it to like a, a little bit more like a foresty green. And that's what uh, what we mean by dulling the color. So I definitely didn't add enough for it to change the color, but I just dulled it. So that's going to be my base color. I might add a little bit more blue to this. This is going to be the base color of my tree. So, and I've got quite a bit, and you can also see that when I was mixing, I didn't spread it all over. I tried to just kind of keep it in a puddle. One of the mistakes I also see when I'm working with kids is they'll take just tiny little bits and by the time they've got the color right they've spread it out over their plate or their mixing palette and they don't have enough to actually paint with so do make sure that you have a pretty generous blob there so if i'm doing the easy uh or the uh i guess we'd call it easier you can see i still have just one ornament on there but all i'm doing here is i'm starting to paint this on i've got enough paint that it's it's really kind of just falling off of here it's going on very, uh, quite nicely. If you find though, that first of all, it's not going on smoothly. Um, and let's say you get some of these little uh, white bits in here. One thing that can help to kind of get into any white cracks, and if, you, if yours isn't as smooth, you might see some of those white bits. I take my paintbrush, I dip it in the water. So now I've just dipped it in water. And that water, if I go over top of that, really helps to get into those cracks. So if you're seeing that it's not covering completely, I suggest that you just take your paintbrush, dip it in water, and it'll help to get into the cracks, okay? So as I come to the edge, I'm being really careful. One thing about your paintbrush, and this is mostly for my, our younger kids who might not have as much experience with painting, is I'm never going and pushing with my paintbrush. I always want to kind of have a, a brush stroke that feels like I'm pulling it. So I'm pulling and I can pull up and I can pull down, but you can see how my, my hand is leading the paintbrush either up or down, leading it back and forth. I would never have the paintbrush leading the way. Okay, that's really hard on the bristles and that's going to wreck your paintbrushes and you're going to lose a lot of the, the detail that it can do. So always do that. The other thing about paintbrushes is I know when we're trying to be careful, sometimes we crowd, we kind of clench up on that paintbrush and we try to hold it right at the bottom. I try to tell people that this metal part of the paintbrush is our no touch zone, meaning that my hands are not going to touch it and I also don't want to ever press that down hard enough that it's touching the surface. So that's our no touch zone. Um, I had a professor once when I was studying fine arts in university. And one of the suggestions that she had when we were painting, she says, you know, if, if it helps, try to hold it differently than you do a pencil. So I know I'm, I'm kind of holding it similar to a pencil right now, but if you're finding that you're, you feel tense or you, you don't feel relaxed enough doing this, because um, you should feel kind of, you should feel good. You should feel relaxed. And if you don't, then try um, holding your paintbrush differently. So maybe holding it up like this um, instead of holding it down closer. And it just helps to switch your mind. Suddenly you don't think of it as it, the same as when you're writing or you're practicing, you're printing, or um, it doesn't have that same association. So sometimes even holding it uh, like this, you know, that even might help you. So that's just a suggestion. You need to hold that the way that it feels good for you. Um, so there really is no right or wrong way. 
but I do, um, I do want you to take care of your paint brushes because they can last a long time. So I'm really making sure as I go through this, that I'm looking at the edges. So I'm looking and saying, oh, did I get right to the edge? And that's one of the things with, um, with a sculpture like this, um, this is called relief sculpture when it pops out of the background. But one thing about it that I notice is a lot of kids, especially when I teach kids, is they'll do the surface, but they'll forget to kind of look at the side and say, oh, did I get right here? Okay, so your job is to look at the sides as well and make sure you get in there. All right, whenever it gets a little like it's, uh, whenever you see those that white showing, remember you can always get your paintbrush just a little bit wet. That'll help that, um, that'll help that paint kind of flow in there. So I'm almost done putting that base coat on. I probably didn't mix enough for two. So I'm just mixing a tad more here. Quickly, off camera. I'm just getting it right in there, okay? All right, so that's my base coat. Now, one of the things about um, any type of sculpture, but I, I find especially relief sculpture like this, is sometimes when we add the color, it tends to make it look flat, like flatter than when it was just white, because some of our shadows are lost, some of our contrast is lost. So we're going to just take this up a little bit and um, we're going to mix a slightly lighter color of green next, okay? So I've already got my colors that I used before, and if you have some extra green, that's great. The next thing I'm gonna add, take is a scoop of white. So I'll take my white, scoop it on. Again, that goes to the side. Now I'm gonna bring some of my white over here. If you still have green, mix it right in there. And I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow too. What I'm trying to get here is a lighter, shade of the green that I had before. So now with that lighter shade, for my uh, simpler option here, just in the middle of it and almost to the edge, I'll put some of that lighter stuff. So that's for the simpler ones. Now I know it's hard to tell on the camera here, but what that's doing is it's making it look, because it's darker around the edges, it's making it look like the edges are going back more. And whenever something's light or bright, it makes it look like it's coming forward. So to make something lighter, we add white. To make something brighter, we add yellow as a general rule. So if I'm doing this here, what do I want to come forward? Well, I want my edges to come forward. So I'm just adding some light and bright onto my edges. Okay. And we're gonna exaggerate this form even more in a bit, but that's a good start for it. So now let's move on to the gray of our mouse. Now I had a few of my friends, um, meaning you guys, email me after and show me some pictures that you've done and they were amazing, really good job. Um, I know that one of the options I mentioned last time was that if the mouse was a little bit tricky, you could make a snowman like this little guy here. So if you're doing a snowman, you'll start by just painting your snowman white. But for the rest of us that are doing the gray of the mouse, we're going to paint our mouse gray. So do make sure that you rinse off your paintbrush and if you have some paper towel you can dry it off a little bit. Now we have an easy way to make um, to make gray here. Our easy way uh, is to take a little bit of black. Black is a really powerful color by the way and I've put that on the side um, and then what I could do is just take some of my white that I have here. Now white, like I said, because uh, black is very, very powerful, you wanna start with your least powerful, so your weakest color, which is white. I took some white over here, put it into the center, and then, woo, just the tiniest, tiniest bit, and I'll hold that up. See how little that little bit of black is? Even that amount might be too much. And I'm gonna mix that into there. That will give me Oh, that wasn't too bad actually. I might even get a little bit more, but it's better to go little by little than putting all that black in all at once. Um, 
so yeah, one of the biggest mistakes that I've, I hate saying mistakes, one of the biggest struggles I think that I see some people do is they want to mix equal parts of both colors and they think that it'll show up as the color that they're trying to mix. But we really have to think about like, what is your weaker color? and slowly adding the darker colors into this. So if you like that gray, especially for our younger kids, this could be uh, the gray that you use. And you can see in my sample, I, I put pink in the middle of his ear, so you might wanna do that too. Um, so I am just adding that gray that I made around there. I do wanna show you a different option for mixing gray. So, um, I'll continue with that in a minute. Now this might be uh, trickier. It is, it is, it's trickier, but that's okay. So my trickier option, um, I'm gonna start with blue. I'm gonna bring my blue over here, okay? Now I'm gonna add a little bit of red. I'll mix these two together. And I should start to get a little bit of purple. I'll have a little bit more red. So it should look a little bit purpley. Now I'm gonna dull that down. I'm gonna take some yellow and mix it in there too. So now it doesn't really look purple anymore. The color is a little like a stormy sky, a little gray. Um, I will take some white and I just need a little extra white because I used a lot on there. I'll take some more white over here. And I'll scoop some white in and I'll mix that in there. Now it should be looking like a bit gray. Mine is a little bit light blue so I do want to add a little bit more red in there and a little bit more yellow. And I just kind of have to play with it. So if it looks a little greenish, it means I have to add one of its complementary colors. So if it ends up looking a little too green, that means that you need more red. If it ends up looking a little bit too purple, you need more yellow. If it ends up looking a little bit too orange, you need more blue. So again, this is kind of an advanced option of making gray, but you can see I made gray and I didn't use any black. So that's an always kind of a fun thing to just kind of, if you don't want to use it for this pro project, if you just want to stick with the easy way of making gray, that's totally okay. But I like to have, um, I like to have that option in the back of your head because I feel like it makes the gray more interesting. And I feel like you kind of have a few extra options for, um, you know, if you want this to look like a warm gray, if you want it to look like a cool gray, it just makes, it just makes it more fun. Um, so, but again, there are options for you, okay? That might be a fun exercise actually for you guys to do one day. If you have extra paint from this project or you just have paint lying around to say, I wonder how many ways I can make gray. And another fun, option and I can see I'm getting right back there to that hind ear. Another fun thing to kind of do is say I wonder how many ways I can make um, brown because brown is actually a mixture of your three primaries together. It's a mixture of red, of blue, and of yellow and depending on how much you mix and you can also mix white in there, or black in there, you're going to get different, um, different shades of brown. So sometimes we make brown by mixing red and green. Well, what is green? It's a mixture of blue and yellow. So your three primaries together, like that. Now you can see I left his little belly. You don't have to leave his belly white, but I did. All right, now this little mouse here is pretty dark. And like I said before, we're going to lighten it up. We want to really make things sort of pop. So to his gray, I'm gonna add some more white. And just in a little spot, you can see I just kind of kept it to that little spot as I mix that together. And then with that lighter gray, I'll just come and I'm gonna add some, maybe to like the top of his cheeks. I'm not going right to the edges with this layer. 
So I'll bring that up a little bit so you can see what I've done. So I'm not going right to the edges with that layer yet. I'm just kind of staying on. Imagine what things are popping forward to you, okay? Um, now, I want to kind of blend this a little bit. So what I'll do is take that darker color again. It is a little bit of a dance, guys. It is, and I'm just kind of tapping with that darker color so I don't have like a hard edge. I don't know if you can see that there, but I'm trying to just blend that in ever so slightly, ever so slightly. Making sure that you look and say, oh, did I get those little edges, right? And getting in there. Oh, yes. And it just gives it more form. I know this isn't the best camera, but I hope you guys are seeing that you can kind of see the different parts of the mouse now. It's, it's, it's starting to take a little bit more form there, okay? Um, for my easier version here, you could do that same thing. So I'm going to mix, uh, I've got my gray here that I used for my, my easier mouse. And for that, I just lighten it up by adding a little bit of white. And I can kind of go edges of his ears, maybe his arms, maybe like his nose there. Just bringing it out and do check. I'm even noticing, oh, look at those spots I missed. So you might have spots that you missed too. And get his little feet coming out there. Excellent. Now this little guy, both of them, they have their belly showing. And um, this might be actually a really good time to start with our white. So let's do that. So to start with, I'm going to just use pure white. I'll take some white on my brush. And if you need to use the little, the smaller brush to get in there, because now we're getting into some of those smaller details, switch to your smaller brush if you need to. Um, so I'm just going to start by painting white on his belly. And some of you might, because you're like, well, it's already white. But you know, when I paint this white um, acrylic paint when it dries because it's it's a waterproof surface when it dries it's almost like plastic it will protect this longer so even though we do have white here I still want you to paint on top of that using white um, it's just gonna uh, help it last a little bit longer so I just started with white and now I'm gonna take that white and I'm going to add a little bit of blue. And when I say little, I mean little. Um, so a little bit of blue, hardly any on my palette, on my thing. You see how little that is? So tiny. And I'm gonna come over here. I didn't even mix it together yet. And I'm slowly, slowly mixing it because I don't wanna change the color too much. I want my eye to still think it's white, even though it's just tinted blue. All right. Now this is what I'm going to do kind of near the bottom of the belly here and along the edges, maybe a little bit under that ball that he's holding. Okay. I might tint it a little bit darker. I maybe was a little bit too conservative. Ah, uh, yes. There. Okay. And I know it, it didn't, might not look like a, a big deal, but it does matter. It does make a difference. So I'll come over to here. And once again, I'm going to do uh, that little bit of blue shading on his belly, so closer to the wood, so the side of the of the mouse mouse's belly that's closest to the wood here. Do, 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 there, uh, I'll put a little bit there and a little bit underneath like this. Okay. Now, since we've got white, it might be, uh, and we're working with white and light blue, it might be a good time to do the snow. And if you're doing the snowman. Um, that light blue, for those of you who are doing the snowman, that light blue color, you can see I did on this sample here, I did like the light blue around the edges and under, around the edges and under. So if you are one of my friends that did the snowman instead, the light blue goes kind of on the edges and on the underside of that. So now for the snow, Again, it's the same as we did for that belly. You're taking white to start with, okay, pure white to start. So every, you know, if I have to rinse out my paintbrush, I make sure I rinse it. And it does help to have a paper towel just to dry some of that off. So I'll start by doing my white 
on the ground. And I know, like I said before, white on white, it does seem silly, but it also matters because it does help to seal this up, okay? So white on my ground, white on my ground over here. Good, white over here. Right over here. Now, for those of you who are watching this on video, a really nice, instead of live, a nice option you have is to press pause if you need to catch up. So I do hope I'm do, going at a, an okay pace for everybody who's joining me live. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do with that little bit of shadow. So again, if you need to mix a little bit more, I might go a little bit darker with my shadow this time. So into my white here, I might add just a little bit more blue, get that to a nice light blue. And I, you know, one of my favorite things in the winter is looking at this, the shadows on the snow. I love it. And you like the colors, like even now I'm looking outside. I love how like when light glistens on top of snow, it creates a different blue than when there's a shadow cast on show on snow. I love sunset colors, how they get reflected. It really, if you haven't actually taken the time to notice the colors in snow, do it. It'll, it'll change your view of winter completely. All right, with this blue, I'm going kind of underneath the mouse. I'm giving them a little bit of shadow. And I'm going to go back here. And you can see what I'm doing with my paintbrush. I'm kind of tapping that on there. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 Okay, and I can add a little bit of shadow under here. And even on the bottom, I might want to add some. It can be pretty random for that, wherever you think that shadow goes. And it's a really nice touch to that snow, isn't it? Instead of just having it just one color, it is really nice to have all those. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, give them a little shadow underneath. And a little shadow over here. And I can put some more wherever I feel like it. And you can see, I know the, uh, the camera isn't picking up on um, all of the, the shading there, but you kind of get that idea of the shadows, okay? Okay, guys. Now, since we've got blue on our minds, I think it's time to do his little hat. But guys, you don't have to do a blue hat. And this is where I think kids are, uh, they excel at this part. Oh, actually, before we start that, let's do the pom-pom on his hat. If you have a pom-pom on his hat, um, I'm using my small brush now. I've moved to that because we are getting a little bit smaller. Um, do the same thing as we just did with the snow in the belly where you're painting it white first, right? Paint it white first and then take your light blue and around the edges, around the edges of that ball and especially under. So I'll pull this up closer. So under, this is the ball. And if I just go to the sort of side under and a little bit around the back, you can kind of see. It's given it a little bit of shadow. I'll do the same thing here. So around the edges and under, and I just gave them a little bit of shadow. So I went kind of around the edges, but especially concentrated on the underside. Okay, now, now we're ready to put the toque on. So like I was saying, kids excel at um, making this your own. And that's what I, I really love teaching the younger age group because sometimes when we're grown ups, we think I wanna do it right, but there is no right or wrong. It's only yours and you need to feel happy with this. So if you want that toque to be a different color, you make it a different color. I'm making mine, mine blue. I can uh, keep my blue the way it is and use it directly out of the container the way that I, um, so I, what I could do here is just paint this thing blue. So I'll do that for this one. And then I'll show you just how I would mix the color a little bit more for my more advanced one. 
So I'll just stop that there, but I'll come back to that. So if I wanted to make this a slightly different color for my, um, but still blue, I might use a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna get some new yellow. And I'm gonna take my blue, bring it over to any spot that's, that's clear. Boy, there's some artists who have some really organized palettes. I'm not one of them. My palettes are always a little bit uh, chaotic, but that's the way my mind works. It works for me. And that's what's cool with art is if it works for you, it works for you. Now, I'm taking the tiniest bit of yellow and I'm gonna mix it in there. So it's not enough to change it to green. It shouldn't change it all the way to green. It's almost making it like, a little bit of a teal or a little bit of a turquoise, but more, more blue. If it has changed it too much towards green, you can add a little bit more blue back. And then finally, I'm gonna take a scoop of white, and not too much though, and I'm gonna mix it in there. Um, and if you guys, whoever's familiar with my artwork will also know that I kind of really like teals and I like these sort of uh, impure colors, that they're not quite, on the primary, but you see that color? I like that color. So I'm gonna go for that color. Uh, so that's my color over here. And hit his tube. So this small brush, sometimes you just, it's almost like I'm tapping the color onto it with that small brush. I'll bring that up closer so you can see a little bit better. And really making sure, oh, there I hide it with my hand, but really making sure that I get really in there okay so this goes all the way back now one of the the things i should also mention is when i'm demonstrating um anytime i'm teaching this happens because i'm not looking straight at my uh, at my artwork sometimes i do miss a few spots and i have to go back so uh, if I do miss a few spots, it's not intentional. It's just that um, I probably didn't see it because I'm trying to make sure that it stays towards you. So I've got a little toque on there, okay? I'm gonna go back to this guy with his just regular blue. And I'll finish his toque. But you can see like color mixing can be so much fun. And there is no right or wrong when you're mixing colors. Um, and again, kids, kids get it. I think kids are so good at just kind of exploring colors and seeing what happens. So if to all the adults out there who might be stressed out about getting exactly the right color, um, I want you to let that go and just um, treat it like a discovery, okay? So once again, we are going to create a lighter version of the colors that we have, and that's going to for, be for highlighting. So I'm going to take some um, white and blue for my easier version, mix that up. I don't want it as light blue as my snow color, right, because this is a lot more intense than my snow, but I'm getting it lighter than the pure, lighter than the pure blue, blue that I used. Okay, for my more advanced color over here, I might need a little bit more white. Just put some white there. For my more advanced color, I'm taking white and mixing it in here. So that's pretty easy, getting the color a little bit lighter. All right, so let's start with painting this on my uh, easier version here. So where I am concentrating on this is here. Now, I think in my sample, I actually alternated these little pieces to make them look, um, one was white and one was blue. So maybe I'll do that in the advanced one, but you don't have to alternate, it can all just be blue. So what I'm doing here is I'm just at each little piece, each little section that I've made, I'm just kind of doing a little tap on top. You see that? And you see how that makes it look like it's coming forward a little bit more, all right? And I promised that I would alternate this one. So before we add the shadows to this, let's just take pure white and we'll say, okay, this one is white. That one I'll leave blue. This section is white. And because I've already painted blue, it almost shades itself sometimes. 
Um, so I'll show you what I would do for the shading for the white here, because it kind of mixes in with the blue, which is actually a really, as Bob Ross would say, a happy accident. All right, so I've alternated the colors there. Now I'm taking that light uh, shading blue that I made for the toque, and I'm just gonna go a little bit there, so on the top part, and then in each of the little sections, tap, 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 tap. Okay, now for the white sections, because my blue mixed in with my white already, to highlight the white sections, I just need a little dab of pure white. And I just put that pure white. And you might have to wait until this dries a little bit longer to do this. You can always come back to this part after. Just that pure white is gonna make that kind of pop out, okay? All right, now let's do the color for his ears and his tail. Um, which is going to be a pink color. So again, um, pink is just red and white, but I'm gonna start with white. I've got, uh, oh, I just put a really big blob of white, but I'm gonna start with white. So I'll take some white over. I don't need a lot, but I'll take some white over. I'm gonna take a little bit of red, okay, just a little bit. I'm putting it right beside the white first, and then I slowly start to mix it in until I get a nice color that I like. Sometimes for this pink, I actually like to add a little bit of yellow because then you get, it warms it up. So you kind of get like a more of a peachy salmon color. So if you're a fan of that color, you can add just a tiniest bit. I hardly added any, it's still pink, but it did warm it up to just kind of more of a fleshy look. So um, that's my pink. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fill out his, the inside of this little guy's ear with pink. I'm going to fill out the inside of the ear here with pink. And his tail is also going to be pink. So making sure that I come along, doing all the edges. on both sides. Okay, and I'll do the same to this guy over here. So he, we only see one ear. So we're only gonna have this one ear here. And then we'll do this little tail. Add that to his tail. And I'm just mixing a little bit more because I, since I'm doing two, I keep forgetting. Oh, I need to mix more for two. Um, there we go. A little bit here. Now, what I want to do next to kind of bring the, the shading out a little bit in that ear and that tail, so I'm going to make that pink a little bit darker. And to make it a little bit darker, you're just going to add a touch more red. So just touch your paintbrush into the red, mix it into that pink until it's just a little bit darker. Okay. So with that little bit darker pink, now I'm going to go, um, what I want to do is really stick to kind of the edges. And what I mean by edges is like, you know, right where it borders the wood. So like right there edge here and that edge there so not necessarily on top so if I just and I might need to make that just a little darker actually so um, if you need to make yours darker you just kind of I always test and then go on top the nice thing too guys about acrylic paint is when this dries if there's any part that you need to paint over top of you can you can paint over top with acrylic paint um, watercolor is not as forgiving um, so if you've ever used watercolor and you make a mistake, you can't really paint on top of it. Your mistakes are very much there. But for acrylic, you know, if it's, if it's bad or if you're not happy with it, you just go, hmm, I'm going to wait till that dries, paint it over. And I can't tell you how many times I do that. A lot of people have an idea that artists just kind of 
you don't have a, like a magic paintbrush like the artist Smurf did in the 80s. Um, and I used to want a magic paintbrush like that. And they just kind of make pictures. Oh, how I wanted that Smurf's magic paintbrush. And they boo do 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 and, the, and everything falls into place. But that's not the case. It's really not the case. I can't tell you how much I wanted that paintbrush. Um, it's, it's work. And sometimes, you know, even now I make mistakes every single day and every single time that I paint, I make mistakes. No exceptions. None. And that's okay. It's one of those things that you kind of accept and your brain actually likes mistakes. It likes having problems to solve. So art is one of those things that gives you problems to solve in a really kind of safe way. That's what I, one of the things I love about it. So I've got a little bit of dark around the edges there. I'm gonna put a little bit of dark, maybe kind of near the bottom of his ears. So if you look here, I'll bring this up closer. Um, right here, I'll just do a little bit of dark here, blending that in, and a little bit of my darker pink there. Okay, so just kind of near the bottom of that inside ear. I'll do the same thing here. Now, if you feel like you need to uh, lighten that up a little bit, you can take um, mostly white with a little bit of red. So mostly white, if you wanna lighten that up to even lighter than our light color that we had before, sorry. Um, make it so almost white. And then you can take that and just kind of roll it along the, just the top, dab it along the top. So it's almost pure white almost pure white almost pure white there okay and while you're at it if you want to take like pretty much pure white we can right now add a few more highlights to so now i'm just taking pure white this is optional um, so for our younger kids if, if you don't want to do this then it's fine but um, if you want to take pure white and just pick out a few spots here and there it could almost look like highlights that just kind of helps bring that and then you know if you need to blend it you could even tap that with your finger and that blends it in a little bit tap 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 okay that really actually makes it pop quite a bit so again pure white and I can go just along the ears. And if that's too bright, tap, 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 tap with your finger. Um, pure white here, tap, 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 tap. So I just put a little bit kind of on his cheek and I'm gonna make this sort of round part stick out. Tap, tap, tap. And a little bit on the foot, a little bit there. And tap, 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 just to blend it. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, and then a little bit on this guy's tail. You don't really have to blend the tail as much. All right, you see how that really popped it out a little bit more? So that's something you can really play with if you feel like you want it to come forward a little bit more. All right, we're almost done, almost done. Uh, let's move on to the red for his decorations. Once again, you do not have to um, make the decorations red. They can be any color you want. I like to, um, sometimes I like to kind of keep things simple and not do a ton of color because it just kind of unifies things a little bit more. But if color is your thing and if you want to make rainbow decorations, you do rainbow decorations. Color is my thing too. I shouldn't say that it's not. But sometimes um, for this particular project, I really like just having it um, just plain red so you can choose now this little guy remember i only put one decoration on there um so i'm just dipping my paintbrush in pure red so i didn't have to mix it this is just pure red to start with and i'm just very carefully painting around here but again feel free to express yourself and get all of those colors in. Now, if you didn't put the decorations on, because I remember I, I said that that was an option, and that was exactly what I did for the tree here. I actually just painted these on. So if you are just painting them on, 
just choose the spots where you think that they could go. And um, before you, you like fill up the whole tree, step back and ask yourself, hmm, where could this go? Where would be a good spot? You don't want to crowd it, right? You don't want to cover up all that green that you have. Um, and I try to make it so that nothing is in like totally in line, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm also going to put some red here. Again, this could be any color that you'd like. I do like how red kind of draws our attention to things, immediately goes there. Um, so I, I do like how the red kind of just adds that sort of splash of color and makes you kind of pay attention. It kind of says, look at me, I'm here. All right. And the red on. Da, da, da. So you can see how that little brush is now really coming in handy, isn't it? There we go. Now, I want to make a lighter version of red, which sounds it's, you know, like our first instinct is to say, well, let's just add white. If we just add white, we're going to get pink. So I'm actually going to brighten this up with yellow, but not so much yellow that it turns to orange. Okay. So let's, I'm just going to put a little bit more red here. So I'm going to take some of my red, look at my messy palette. Uh, I'll find a spot here. Now I'm going to take yellow remember yellow is pretty weak so i can take a a pretty big blob of that without it changing too much and i'm going to mix that in it's going to give me just a slightly brighter orange and now i can or a slightly brighter red it hasn't turned orange and i can take a little bit of white in there now i don't want to add enough white that it turns too pink okay Again, this is a little bit more advanced. So for my younger friends out there, if this is a little bit too hard to brighten up that red, then don't worry about it. Yours is gonna look great anyway. Um, but this would just go kind of in the middle. Just add a little blob, a little blob. And you can see like if it's not making a huge difference, Maybe you need to add a little bit more white or a little bit more yellow to that color until it does show up as a, as a bigger difference. So if I hold that up, you can kind of see the difference that that made. So same thing over here. Okay. And since we have, we're working with red and pink right now. I like to add a little bit of rosiness to the little guy's cheek and a little bit of pink on his nose. So, um, you know, I'll go back to this light pink that I used for his tail for that. And I'm gonna add, and this is optional too. A little bit of pink here, a little bit of pink here that gives him some cheeks. And I'm gonna add a little bit of, little dot for the nose. You can see that little dot. Okay. And on this one, I only see one cheek. So right here, I'm going to go like this little rosy cheek. Right here, I'm going to do a little dot for the nose. Okay. All right. Now we are ready for the trunk of the tree. Um, you have some brown. You know what, you can just use the brown instead of, um, instead of mixing. So um, get a scoop of that brown and just add that right on there, right to the edge. And get a little bit of brown for this, add it right to the edge.
Now, the next part is actually a little bit more advanced. So it is optional for our younger friends that are joining us, but for our older friends, um, or if you want just to give it a shot, it actually does make, a, it does make a difference. I think it makes a difference. We're going to mix brown, but it's gonna be a little bit darker than the brown that you've got. So I'm taking brown, I'm taking a little bit of black. Remember black's really powerful. So just a tiny bit of black and I'm gonna mix that in there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'll take my small paintbrush. I'm gonna make this watery by adding a little bit of water in there. So it really can flow off of my paintbrush. So if you wanna take a scrap piece of paper and just see if it's flowing. So if you can kind of go like this and lightly touch. So if I touch really hard, it's gonna make a thicker line. But if I touch lightly, it should make a nice skinny line. And this skinny line, and I'll demonstrate it on here. This skinny line, I'm really kind of almost doing an outline, but I don't want it to be too dark and that's why we water it down. So I take like a really watery bit and I'll show you again how watery this looks. So here, it's almost like it's starting to look see-through. Do you see that? That's about what we want, okay? So it's, it's a little bit watery. And I just kind of let that soak into the edges. And I find, and that's even around the, the Christmas balls, the, the edges of everything, I really find that that is kind of that finishing touch that makes a huge difference. And I know my camera might not be showing this, but I can see, when I look at this, I can see that that's, it's really making it look like it's um, coming out. See if I hold it up a little bit higher. And I know I've got white spaces, that always happens when I demonstrate, but I hope you still get the idea here. Okay, so I'm really going underneath and I'm going close. Close as I can. It just makes it, and to me it also kind of, it's almost like adding like an antique wash, like to make it look a little bit antique. That's kind of the feeling that you get from it. But you're just really letting that pop. So I started with my tree. I'm gonna do that around my mouse too. And And I'll only demonstrate this step on this one um, rather than the other one, because it is a step that kind of, it does take a little bit longer to do. You're just finding where that can go around the outside of these balls. But do make sure, um, I think having it watery is the key because then it kind of mixes in with what you've got on there already. It doesn't, it shouldn't overpower it. It should just kind of mix in. So you can do that um, to the mouse as well. The other thing is, is it kind of blends into the wood, which is kind of nice. So even if you get this on, like right onto the wood, like I'm doing here, it, it's actually in kind of a nice effect because in a way it, it, it's like pushing, like I said before, light, and bright comes forward and dark and dull kind of go back. So if I'm putting this sort of dullish brown, this darker brown, um, just right next to the wood and even on the wood a little bit, it pushes it back a little. So pushing that part back. That's what this is doing. So even though we're doing relief sculpture here, these principles of um, these ideas of uh, color mixing and um, color theory, we would say about like how colors um, 
change, like how the different tones of colors, the different shades of colors change the way we perceive them. That's all called color theory. And you can apply it to anything that you do with paint, okay? Anything that you do with color. That works for, so um, right there, I kind of made this look a little less thick. It just kind of pops things out a bit, okay? Now, now that I've done that, we're ready for our final step. Our final step is snow and then snowflakes. So let's start with snowflakes. Grab your scrap piece of paper and you're going to be using a small brush and you're going to be using um, just white paint. You want the white paint to be kind of flowy and if you got a, um, a kit from me, it is pretty flowy, but I would suggest just kind of watering it down a little bit. So taking your brush, dip it in water and get it a little bit flowy, not quite like the brown. So just enough so that when you go like this, you can make a skinny line. Now I mentioned this already, that if you press hard with your brush, no matter what kind of brush you, are, you have, you're going to get a thick line, even if you've got a little brush. I want you to think about just, it's like tickling the page with the paintbrush, tickling the page. So I'm barely touching. And you can see I can get that line pretty small. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can do snowflakes. You can practice, you can even practice for the rest of today or the next two days before you actually put it onto your, um, onto your painting. So easy way for, um, for our young kids out there, easy way is just dots. You can handle that. So I'm just taking this and dotting it down. Another easy way is just little circles. So when I do a circle with a paintbrush, I always find it's easier if I just do half on one side, like a letter C, half on the other to make little circles. So that's another way to do paint, to do snowflakes. A fancier way would be like this. I start with a line down and then I do an X going through there. So I've got an X. And so that gives me six sides. I could leave it like this, or I can make those six sides a little bit fancy. I could put like little letter V's on top. So you can see that this is something that you um, really might need to practice to get the feel of the brush. Because especially when we put it onto the wood, the wood is rough, it is a little bit trickier. So that's one way to make a snowflake. And I can put little dots in between. Really, like when I've made snowflakes with my kindergarten kids before, or with any kids, they get so creative. If you start with those six sides and you fill up those sides, as long as you do the same thing on every arm of that snowflake, it's gonna look awesome. It's gonna look awesome. Um, one other way that you can do this is you can take, and I start with like, almost like making a roof of the house that's kind of caved in. And then I go the side of the house that's caved in. And then I kind of make an upside down V that's caved in. And that gives me another snowflake and I can put like a dot um, coming out of each peak there, okay? So after you've practiced, and I understand you might not be doing this like right now, after you've practiced that, if I'm doing the easier version, um, I would just put my, put my dots, some vary it with some could be big, some could be small, some could be little dots, some could be circle. I'm just gonna put those in the sky. If I'm doing my more advanced version, I'm just going to take some of those um, ideas that I practiced and I'm putting this on there. You might have to do two coats of this and I know it is tricky because it is so rough. So this one could be like this. And then I might want to do little dots in between. That could be one of my snowflakes. I'll make another snowflake over here. These snowflakes. 
There is another type of snowflake that I often make for my ornaments that I'm actually going to show you too. And so I make thousands of snowflakes. I really do. <laughs> it's crazy. So the other one is, this is trickier, but I make a V and I turn it into a diamond or upside down V, turn that into a diamond. And then I make an upside down diamond on top of that. I guess diamonds don't, are not upside down. Diamonds are diamonds. So I go like that. And then I do a line through here. And make that end coming out. So again, line straight through. And then roof of the house, roof of the house. Now for the rest of my snowflakes, I'm just going to do a combination of circles and dots, wherever I kind of feel like they could use it. And some dots, dot, 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 wherever I feel like it needs to go on. I'm going to take some snow and make it look like it's falling on the trees. So I'm taking just pure white and just touching it onto there to make it look like, yeah, that's where it's snowed. That's where the snow is fall, is, uh, you know, getting collected. So if you imagine snow falling onto a tree, onto its branches, that's what we're going for. A feeling of snow collecting on its branches, okay? Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. And I think a little bit more here, wherever it feels like that. Again, with pure white, I'm also going to add a few little highlights to the balls that I made. So just a little dab of white, just like this. And I could even add a little bit, oops, sorry, I got a little bit of red there because it wasn't totally dry. A little bit of snow on its trunk right there, the trunk of the tree. Um, now, the last thing that I have to do is just a little eye. My younger kids, if, um, if using the paintbrush is going to be too tricky for you to do the eye, I want you to take a Sharpie and I want you to just do a little dot with a Sharpie. That works, okay? But for um, all of us that want to try, grab your scrap piece of paper first to practice and just see if you can make um, really small dots. So just practice. Um, you might find that you need to add a little bit of water to your black paint. So I'm just using pure black paint and just practice to see if you can get really small dots, okay? Really small. Also, if you want to add a mouth, you might want to practice doing really tiny lines and make sure that you can, you can do that first. Again, if you make a mistake though, the nice thing is, is that you can paint over top of it. So um, I'll put a little eye right there and I'm going to give them a little mouth. Just like that. And if I need to come back later and, and change that, I will. But for now, I think that's good. On my easier one, my other option, the little mouth might be like this. And then his little eye here and one here. And then I can put a little dab, tiniest little bit of white. So I'm just rinsing off my paintbrush and grabbing a little bit of white. Again, you might need to practice doing really tiny dots. Um, and kids, you don't, younger kids, you don't have to do this step, but oh, I think I had a little bit too much water on there because it wasn't quite, it's a little bit too flowy. There, a little highlight. I'm going to have to come back to that one. A little highlight in his eye. I'll show you on the other one here. Okay, here I am. I'll do a little highlight in his eye here. I don't know if you can really see that. And then on the other side, I'll just do a little bit of white there. You can kind of see that there. Okay, that's it, guys. That's your little mouse in the snowy winter day. I hope you had fun. Um, and I know a lot of you are going to catch the video on this. So um, 
If you do have questions, if you're watching this video, truly, honestly, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I do love answering questions and I do love having the conversations. And um, I'd love to see how these turned out. Thank you to everybody that sent me pictures already. Um, but yeah, that's it. So thank you so much, guys. Merry Christmas to everybody and thank you for joining me. Bye everybody.